I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat what happened tonight. It is an embarrassing loss that I think, you know, has the potential to completely derail the Kentucky football season. Um, You know, you watch the game. I don't have to go over all of it. It was – but it was embarrassing. And it was I, – I, I, was, I was thinking to myself while I was waiting on the never-ending show that was on before this, what what were the – like, what was a loss for Mark Stoops? I mean, they, they, they've had worse losses in terms of teams that have beaten them. But this was pretty demoralizing for, for, for a season. And maybe as much as any they've had because, you know, you look at the rest of the schedule, they have five games, none of which they're sure to win. Uh, I mean, I I would be surprised if they lost them all, but there are, is no game that they're certain to win out of the last five. And you could have made an argument that the one that they were best suited to win was tonight. And after the Georgia loss, we've talked over the years about how Stoops teams, unfortunately, can take one bad loss and turn it into two. But it looked like they were not going to do that. They came out up 14 nothing, played great in those first – uh in those first you know first quarter that first quarter was excellent that first quarter was uh Liam Cohen at his best Brad White at his best Mark Stoops at his best Devin Leary played well Ray Davis played well I mean I you you couldn't have asked for a better first quarter and then uh you get a stop on on defense and you get the ball back and I think the next little sequence ended up defining the game you know, we, we, we went deep to Barry M. Brown, just missed him. Freddie Maggard, you may have heard on the pregame show, said that uh, he didn't like when we go deep on first down. It gets us behind the uh, behind the chains, and we're not able – and I think he had looked it up, and every time we had thrown deep on first down, we hadn't completed it once all year, and we had only gotten a first down on that series of downs like twice out of like 12 attempts. Well, there's another one. Um but, nevertheless, you punt them the ball and you stop them. And the fake punt, I'm sure, is what a lot of us are going to focus on, and we should because it completely changed the game and you could argue completely changed the season. I, I, I was watching at home. The moment, so, you know, they, they snap the ball over the head of the quarterback. He falls on it. It's now fourth and ten on the 39. I, I thought they would go for it because at that point, with the way the game's playing out, punting, I didn't even consider that they would punt. I thought either they'd bring out that kicker because he's got a huge leg and maybe they would try a 56-yarder or they would go for it. I, I never thought they would punt it. And when the punter ran out there, I said, well, this is go- this is clearly a fake. They're either going to try to, like, they're either going to take a penalty here or try to draw them off sides, then go for it. But if they, this is a fake. There's no way they're going to punt at the 39 yard line. And of course, it wasn't. Kentucky's coaches at the at, were were obviously signaling that they believed it was a fake. But the players still looked confused. If you go back and watch the video, two or three of them are talking to each other and pointing. I I think in hindsight, you have to call time out there. They don't. We end up in one-on-one coverage. Now, look, give the guy credit. He, a punter threw it 40 yards on a dime, and the receiver made a play. But still, I don't – listen, I'm not a special teams guru, and maybe there's a rule against it or stuff, but I don't understand why the one gunner that you're allowed in college football, why we didn't have two guys on him. What else are they going to do right there? I mean, if they kick it, let it bounce into the end zone – and I, I, I don't I don't know what we were doing. But they make the play, it's fourteen seven, and it and the game completely changed. Now I agree with what Tom Leach said to Mark Stoops there at the end, where he said, you know, you're still ahead. You should still find a way to win. But there's no doubt it wasn't the same team after that. After we were up fourteen nothing, we lost tonight thirty eight to seven. I want you to think about that. We we let Missouri beat us on our home field. In three quarters, 38 to 7. If you take out the first quarter, in our last two games, we have been outscored seven of the eight quarters, 89 to 20. That is an embarrassment. 
And, you know, listen, we usually have one clunker a year, and we also then have one disappointing game a year. But what I think really frustrates me about this one as much as any of the losses Mark Stoops has had is I had gotten the feeling all season that this was a program that had some unjustified arrogance. We talked about it this week on the show. I thought there was unjustified arrogance. This, you know, since Mark's been here, there's been a chip on the shoulder with the program. And I've liked that. There's sort of a disrespect and us against the world. There's an attitude they've played with. And it, and it's a great attitude most of the time. But I had felt like at some points this year that that attitude went from one of aggression and excitement and climbing the ladder, which I think is how you have success in life, to sort of have that drive to arrogance and sort of complacency for a group that really hadn't accomplished anything in the last two years. I mean, they haven't. Yet they acted like, in some ways, they had. And I think you could sense it amongst players. I don't want to call individuals out, but there was definitely a sense of sort of, you know, a little trash talking. But there was a lot of trash talking going on in those first few games. A lot of, you know, getting in somebody's face when they did something. And against Georgia, we're down 20 and we're talking trash. And I think it came to a head tonight. 14 penalties. They were all, 12 or 13 of the 14 were either penalties of poor decisions or arrogance. You know, personal fouls. uh, Holds on plays you didn't even need to hold where the play was past them. Pass interferences because you just got beat. It was embarrassing. And not only did we lose, We were the kind of team that, like, you really enjoy beating because you talk trash and then don't don't back it up. And, you know, this has been – listen, I'm Mark Stoops, one of his biggest fans. I have not just people I, I respect and like on that coaching staff. I have friends on that coaching staff. So it's hard to be critical just like it was hard three years ago for me to be critical to Cal because I felt similar, similarly then. But this, I hope this is a dose of humble pie for some folks. I do. Those comments Monday that Stoops made on his postgame show, I didn't want to blow them out of proportion because it's, you know, everybody can have a bad day. But those were comments that showed a disconnect from the fan base in a way I'd never heard from him. And I thought they showed an arrogance that was around the program. Hey, we're good. You want us to be better? Pony up. Okay. I'm not saying I totally disagree with that, but that wasn't the time, and tonight shows why. You got as good of players as Missouri. I'd argue you got better players than Missouri. And they beat you. And they beat you because you were undisciplined, because you did dumb things, And because you let them be mentally stronger than we were. And that is on the coaching staff. It is. You don't get beat 89 to 20 in seven of the last eight quarters and point fingers anywhere else except at yourself. There's nowhere else to point them. Look, there were bad calls. That was a bad pass interference call. You know what, though? You still just completely gave in. And that's, you know, that's unacceptable. And so you got two weeks off. And you're now going to be an underdog against Tennessee. You're probably going to be an underdog against South Carolina. You're probably going to be an underdog against Mississippi State. You're going to be an underdog against Alabama. There's a very good chance you'll be an underdog against Louisville, even though they lost tonight. So you have five games. You're probably going to be an underdog in all of them. If they don't come out and play like the Stoops teams five years ago, where there was hunger and excitement, but also a sense of we're going to prove something, but we're not going to walk around like we've already proved everything and we're just waiting for everybody to pat us on the back. Because that's what we've been doing. we got a lot of guys that are making a lot of NIL money and are doing zero 
or very, or you know, close to zero. And I think it's unacceptable. And there are some things that have been problems forever that everybody just has moved, you know, acted like didn't happen. We can't punt. We can't cover punts. We sit back in zone and what let quarterbacks pick us apart. We drop passes. We hold. And then sometimes Leary misses passes. I actually don't but put this on him, really. I don't think he played all that poorly. But it's it, that is an embarrassing loss, and I hope that it, re, it reverses Kentucky back to what made Stoops so awesome to cheer for as he was building this program. The hungry, young upstart doing it his way and succeeding. And not what we saw tonight, which was a different thing that, to be quite, quite frank with you, we are not good enough to do. We're not good enough to play like we did tonight and to walk around and hit people after the play's over and have dumb penalties and talk trash and tell people to pony up if we're going to lose 89-20 to 20 in seven of the last eight quarters. And a lot of the stuff Stoop said in his postgame about what the players and the discipline and the mentality, which I agree with everything him on, that he says. I also think, though, it applies to the football program as a whole. Because to use a phrase from the mountains, it may have been the case that somehow in this offseason, we might have gotten a little big for our britches, and now it's time to kind of remember who we are.